Okay. Guess what? It's time to blow some stuff up. That's right. It's Gundam. Mobile Suit Gundam. Crossfire. And basically what's happening here, folks, is, as some of you may have noticed, I recently did some stuff with DBZ. And I had some fun doing it. And I feel like, you know, I want to do some other stuff related to some anime series that I'm currently hopelessly addicted to. So, I figured, <coughs> hey, I'm big on Gundam right now. I'm watching the original series, Z Gundam, Double Z Gundam, and Stardust Memories, you know, it, when I get the time. So, I'm going to be doing some Gundam games just to have a little fun with it. Now, this is not the best Gundam game I have access to. In fact, it's not even close. It's a good game on its own merits, but it's long since been outstripped. But, it's one of the few games that feels authentic to the way that these machines should function, should work. As opposed to, like, Dynasty Warriors, or say, for example, um, the Gundam Versus series, which is so fast-paced, it almost feels kind of like, I don't know, as if these things have permanent jet engines attached to them. But this is a fun little game, and I'm going to... I did the Earth Federa Federation Forces already, just to get my teeth cut on and figure out how to play. But I've always been a bigger fan of Char and the Xeon, so I'm going to try and play through them for my next run-through and see how that turns out. I will admit, this game is a bit more difficult than I anticipated, but I think we can have some fun with that. And let's see. So let's select Xeon. And what should I call myself? Hmm. Well, I, I'd like to claim, claim I'm in some way as good as Char, but that ain't even close. But, there's someone else I'm a huge fan of in the series, and I'm gonna steal his name, so... if I can spell it right. Alright, and Gundam fans probably know who I'm referring to here. I'm referring to, of course, Trez Kushinada, who I'm sure I'm spelling his name wrong, but he was, uh, he's actually one of my favorite characters from the Gundam Wing series. Uh, him and Zex, of course, with Zex, of course, being revealed later to be, uh, Milliardo Peacecraft, if I remember the show correctly. You know, good lord, it has been a long time since I watched that freaking show. I haven't watched Wing in years. This marked the beginning of what would be known as the One Year War. Okay, so this is the basic story. Now, for those of you not familiar with Gundam, and if you are, thank you for watching my show, I guess. Um, if you aren't, but um, basically what happens is, is humanity, you know, had a big war, war, you know, shit got messed up. A lot of them moved into space because of overpopulation, and then there got to be a lot of friction between humanity and the people in space. And the people in space formed Xeon, and as a result of that, decided to come back and take Earth for themselves and kick everybody's brains in. And the Principality of Xeon has invaded Earth and started what is eventually known in the series as the One Year War. And when you play the Federation side, you play as a test pilot. Yeah, see, the war is starting to move in a new phase. He plays a test pilot who's testing out the new, generally mass-produced mobile suits that the Federation is using, and that gets you to get, you know, using the gun cannon and all kinds of neat stuff, too, so. So what, I'm piloting a stupid tank? Oh, no, cool. There we are. Proceed immediately to the defense line. 
the Zaku. Now, in the in the series of uh, in the series of Gundam, the Zaku and the Gundam are perhaps the most iconic of all units in the series because the Zaku is the principal unit for Xeon. As you can see here, I've got myself a machine gun, I got myself an axe, but I don't got much else. This thing isn't exactly a heavy weapons platform. It's more designed for general close combat type of work. And as you can see, I'm moving around an open battlefield with you know, some okay, decent graphics. I'll admit, the game isn't graphically as colorful or as intensely vibrant as, say, the you know Dynasty Warriors Gundam which we will get into by the way I have that game and I also have Shin Dynasty Warriors Gundam which Shin Gundam Muzu which we will be checking out out soon as I've recently started to play it and I'm having a an immense amount of fun with that freaking game I will however admit it is a little bit more complicated I need to understand since I have no idea what the heck they're saying 90% of the time thank you reload and that's, like I said, that's one thing you can do, is you can reload your character's weapons at these supply depots. So, it's it takes a slightly more strategic mindset than the Dynasty Warriors, which is all hack and slash. You have to manage your ammo, manage your guns, manage your weaponry, even manage your pilots and your units. So, you can actually build your own forces... And they, they make a big deal out of this, but to be perfectly blunt, it isn't as big a factor as you think, because you can only ever have two units and two and, and yourself out on the field at any given time. So it's really about finding the units that work best for you and then building them up until either better units come up or you can get your hands on some really good high quality weaponry. Yes, ax. I want to ax you a question. Where's Nappa when you need him? But the oh, and that means I finished the mission. Yay! <laughs> but yeah, the Zaku looks so cool. The graphics on this are fairly decent. They're not quite as as vibrant or as colorful as some of the other games that I've played. For example, I'll be showing you. I'm going to be beating the Gundam 0081 series soon, and I'm going to actually do a Federation. I've done a Federation run on that so far. But when I do a Xeon run, I'll be doing a, a video capture on that, too. So, yay, we beat the mission! And what do I get for it? I get... The perfect score, hopefully. Yay! S rank, superior. Because I am the superior pilot. When I did my normal run through the Federation game, I actually got a... Ace pilot ranking, which I guess means you're very, very high, high level. But all right, let's see here. Yes, I know all that. Yeah. And these are all just sort of like basic instructions here. So here's the between mission levels. And you see I have points, and there's a date, and there's all that stuff. And over here is our is our systems. You can select mission, which gives you some missions. And the missions include the Federation base, which I have to do that in three days, and then you also have supply, which allows you to buy mo mobile zoot suits, including the Zaku 2, which means I can get the Zaku 2, but that takes two days. I can also requisition an, an additional pilot, in this case, Gwenataya, or however you pronounce her name, I don't know. But if you go to the hangar, I've got a Zaku 2 that I'm using, and a Zaku 1 that I'm not. My Zaku 2, 2 is what I'm currently piloting, and I can customize it with different stats. Weapon, attack, and defense. Attack increases your overall attack damage. Weapon increases your uh, your weapons ability and gives you access to different weapons and variety of equipment. And then lastly is the defense option. Which defense is pretty...
pretty cool cool for some character designs and for some play styles but overall you want to focus on weapon more than anything else because weapons will will pay out bigger in the end because you get more ammo you get better equipment you get the uh, you get you know access to more 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 gear more ammunition supplies So I've got a new pilot and my modification has been done. So if I go to the hangar now and I go to the Zaku 1, I can do pilot and it will be Gail Turner or Gwenataya and I'm doing Gwenataya. And then I can also go back to my Zaku. And you can boost both your own equipment and the equipment of your partners. So I can go back to my Zaku, I can do customization. I can do attack and now I can up the attack and now I back out back out and you go to the next next turn and it advances you to the next day and the day is the top is the top right corner where it says 10.6 and tomorrow I must I must fight the battle at the base so let's see here and mission so I got another day to do that, and now I have another Zaku, and I can assign a pilot to it. And in this case, I can assign, assign Gail Turner. So I now have a three Zaku team: two, two level twos, one, one Zaku one, and then I can do one last upgrade to my Zaku. One thing I am disappointed is that I can't paint or change the coloration of my Zaku, my my units. They all come with pre-selected colors, so you can't really change that. It's not a big deal breaker, but it would be nice to be able to change the color of your unit rather than be stuck with whatever the default color is. That is kind of a shame. You know, some games it's not a big deal, like the Mo like the Dynasty Warriors Gundam. You don't really care because you're playing the hero units, but these are just the generic mobile suits. It'd be nice to give them some personality. Anyway. Let's move to the next day, and we'll run another mission, and then we'll see how this goes. And mobile suit Zaku Cannon may now be requested. So my mobile suit has reached its level. And before every real battle, you want to save. So what I do is I'm going to go ahead and save a new record under the Xeon forces. And then I'm going to go to Mission, and I'm going to go to Jungle, and I'm going to make an Assault on the Federation base. Now you get a certain amount of battle points for the missions themselves, but you also get points for your performance. So the more kills you rack up, the better better you survive the attack, the more, more uh, targets you annihilate, and you know, things like that the better off you are at the end of the mission, you'll get more points, you can buy more suits. Building of enemy reinforcements, launching attack, yes, 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 yes. So in other words, what they're saying here is that they want me to assault the base with my units, hit them hard, take down, take down any defenses, and capture their base, so that they can't actually launch an assault against us. And I have a 280mm Baz, which is something, I suppose has a massive amount of power and enormous range but doesn't carry a whole lot of ammunition which is okay so and then we have the uh, other two who are packing the 105 5 and 120 millimeter machine guns so I'll take the Baz and see how it does if I don't and if I don't have a resupply place then I'm gonna have to rely mostly on axe to axe combat and just introduce axe to some face Our target is the base on the opposing shore. Eliminate the enemy defense force while protecting our vital position to the southwest. Right, right. So. Okay, so we've got two targets here. And this is your map brought up with the start button. And then you notice that I've got a central base on the, so on the southwest here and then a resupply base to the... To the southeast so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get in there now the biggest problem with the, with this uh, 
with the Zealand units is that they don't have weapons built into them the way a lot of the other units do do for the Federations. For example, the Federation units tend to have like guns built into their heads and stuff. Whereas the Zeon units, they tend to have all their weapons, you know, either carried on their person or that's it. Yeah, you know, they don't carry anything else. And while that's not a bad thing in and of itself, it means that if you lose your arms or if you lose some of your, your main weapon, you're pretty much left with either your axe or headbutting things to try and take them out. And unfortunately, that can be a problem when you're fighting for your life in a pitched battle, but hey. I will say this, the Baz is a bad piece of hardware. One shot from that thing is usually enough to do a lot of damage apparently. Now, let me go run back here. I'm going to need to resupply my equipment. Now to boost, I should have probably mention the controls on this. Left stick moves, right stick aims, you lock on with the R1 button, you block with the R2 button, and then sniper mode is the, uh, or, sorry, you block with the L2 button, you lock on with the L1 button, you uh, snipe with the R2 button, and then the R1 button has another function. It's usually a built-in weapon, like a head Vulcan or, or some other equipment, but it's usually some sort of weapon system. So, let's go invade, let's go engage. Hi, goodbye, you're, oh, there goes a the shield. He just lost his shield. Oh, he's dead. And... I need to go take this guy from behind because he's trying to sneak up on my base and I ain't having none of that. Oh, see? He got through. Yeah, see? Unfortunately, we've lost. Yeah, see? You gotta be careful. You know, I'm going to back out and, di and get the machine gun. I prefer the machine gun. The Baz is a great heavy hitter, but it's not practical for long engagements. Shame, too, because I, I liked it. But one shot one shot does not take out a target. You know, I only get 12 shots. If it takes more than two to take out a target, I'm wasting ammo. So let's try this again. good thing about this game is there's no penalty if you fail, so to speak. You just sort of get... You just sort of back out to the point before you actually got engaged, so... <laughs> One thing that does annoy the crit on me, the loading. Every time you get back into the mission, you have to go through the loading screen again. <laughs> Enough with your goddamn loading screen. Enough! Let's get to the shooting already. Now... I'm going to go with the, I'm going to let these guys stick with the weapons and just go with the 120 millimeter. Used it last time, it was highly effective, I'm not going to, not going to badmouth it now. Plus you can use it for the smaller targets, which saves time and allows you to, you know, really just mop things up. Does mean that I'm going to have to figure out a good way to keep myself supplied without having to run back to the ammo storage, but now I've got 270 rounds thanks to the upgrades, which means I have plenty of ammo to work with and I don't have to worry about you know, engaging enemies enemies and running out of ammo anytime soon. My only real complaint about the Zakus is that they're a bit clunky. They, they're kind of slow for a heavy assault unit, but they're highly effective and their gun is pretty powerful, all things, all things being equal. Wow, that thing is taking. Enemy reinforcements. Wow, that thing is taking a lot, a lot more damage than it should have. <laughs> Don't let them near our vital southwest position. All right, so I'm gonna try and get ahead of the mobile suits. I'm gonna reload. Then I'm gonna turn right around and go straight back in at them, and just try to get into the, get to the base and take them out before they can become a problem. So quick reload. That's a good thing about the gun is it is it's quick to reload. You don't have to use a lot of ammunition, ishin, and you can fill it up real fast. Downside, it's not quite as effective against the enemy as I'd like it to be. See now he's trying to sneak by, little bugger, and I'm like not having none of that. 
Where do you think you're going, huh? Come here. I asked you a question. Where do you think you're going? Axe up the ass. Come here. That's right. That's right. How do you like that axe, huh? Yeah, you're done. You're done. Bullet, 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 bullet time. How do you like that? There's bullets. Bullets in your chest. In your robot's chest. Whatever. I don't care. You're getting bullets. Lots of bullets. That's right. You like them bullets? You like them bullets because they make you go boom. Well, you don't like them. Maybe I do. Alright, let's mop up their defenses. Where are they freaking coming from? And where are they getting... And where are they getting so many of these freaking mobile suits? Oh, one other thing. The water effects in this game are pretty cool for a game, a game in the early PS3 generation, but... But they do have a weird side effect. When you use them, you can't actually get your boosters going in them. So going into water is sort of like a double-edged sword. They did fix that in a later game, actually, because... They actually fixed it so that you could, uh... You could use the boosters even underwater. And it actually, because you're way you weigh less, the boosters need less energy. So that's right. I am superior. You have fallen before me and my mighty machine guns. That's right. It belongs to us for now. And I am superior. We should be able to hold this base. So we're gonna hold on. We're gonna play with that for a bit. But that'll be all for the moment. And I'll put this up here and see if anybody likes it. You all let me know know if you want to see more of this or if there's any interest in it at all. Anyway, let me wrap up this mission, see how many points I got, and then I'll go ahead and save it. There we go. Ooh, 1,500, and I get 2,400 bonus. Nice. Didn't take too much damage, but I'm lucky, lucky my one arm's almost not blown off, you know? Almost lost an arm there. Ouch. Federation Movement in Indonesia, they've left Indonesia heading for Weapons Development Base, that they're going for the Gundam. Alright, we're done, we're done, we're done. One of the things that is interesting about this game, and we'll talk about more when I do the next part of this playthrough, is you can actually lose missions if you don't do them in time. So you have to try and get them done as soon as you possibly can. There we go. Alright. So, saving my Xeon game. Alright, so, that ought to do it, folks. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here for the time being. And then, next time, we'll continue with the March of the Mighty Principality of Xeon. Hail Xeon!